In this lesson, we're going to learn how to mirror components within an assembly. The file that we're going to use for this lesson is called mirrorassembly.iam, and it can be found in your Chapter 9 exercise folder. We're going to start off by selecting the mirror component tool from the assembly panel. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our components. I'm going to select the bottom component, and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the dial, and it will select everything in between. You could also select the components individually, or you could also select them within the graphics window. The next thing I'm going to do is select on the mirror plane button, and then in the graphics window I'm going to select the work plane that we're going to mirror these components about. And let's reposition the screen a little bit. And you'll notice the components are showing up here in the dialog box and there are some different icons representative in front of each one of those. Let's review them quickly. The green icon is telling us that it's going to be a brand new component. The yellow is telling us that it's going to be reused or it will become an occurrence. The gray is telling us that it will be excluded and won't have any effect whatsoever on the mirror. I'm going to minimize the subassembly and I'm going to start to change these by simply just selecting on the icon. So we're going to switch everything back to the yellow with the exception of the fork slider because that fork slider I want that to be brand new. But before I go ahead and do that you'll notice that the color inside of the graphics window is representative to the color that we have here. So for example if I switch the slider to yellow it's also changing yellow inside the graphics window. So Another thing that we can do, sometimes I can just take a given component and just mirror it about a different plane by simply right clicking and selecting on the specific plane that you'd like to do. Let me zoom up on this a little bit, kind of see what's happening. So let's switch it to the YZ and you see that we definitely get a different effect. And finally let's switch it to the XZ and you can see that it flipped the component entirely around. And in this case, what I want to do is I want to create a brand new component for that slider. So I'm going to go back and change it to the green. Down at the bottom of the dialog box, this is where we're going to tell Inventor what we want to do with existing components. So in this case, we're going to reuse standard content. The last section down here is preview components. As you can see, I have the mirror reused and standard because I want to see all of those components be previewed in the graphics window. So we'll go ahead and we'll click on the next button. Now from the mirror component file name, this is where you can go back and specify the new file name. So you can manually type that in if you want just by double clicking inside that. There's also a naming scheme that you can set back up with the prefix or a suffix. So in this case if I wanted to go back and just change this to INV for inventor, I can apply that and you'll see that it is now the INV maybe an underscore would be better before that we'll reapply that you could change your mind and just do a suffix so in this case let's change it to CBT we can apply that and again you can see all the changes that you make and you can apply them before you actually commit it back to the hard drive so now at this point the next option is here. Do I want to go back and insert this into the existing assembly or open it in a new window? We can also go back and designate where this is going to be saved. If I right click in the file location cell, we can go back and specify by a user path where you can again just type back in here or navigate out to a specific location. The workspace or the source path where the current file is being saved. So in this case, let's go ahead and click on OK. And switching to an isometric view here, you can see that our assembly has been mirrored. And if you look in the browser, we can see that most of the components have been mirrored and have become a second occurrence. So the file that we created new is the CBT fork. So let's just double click on that to make it active here. And what you'll see is that this file it's a derived component of the first fork so in this case I'm going to just go ahead and click on return and let's prove that out so I'm just going to rotate 
the screen around a little bit. And what I'd like to do is I'm going to make the first fork current, and then I'm just going to apply a fillet to these two inside edges. We'll just make a minor change. And what I want to do is just show what happens here. So as soon as I make it to the first component, we'll click Update, and then Return. And being that it is a drive part, you'll see that the new part has been updated. Now what I'm going to do is make the derived part current. And now let's go back and I'm just going to add in a hole. So I'm just going to make that the active sketch plane. I'm going to place in a center point. And then I'm just going to place in a hole. So now you'll see that I have a hole placed in our derived part. Click on return. And you'll see that change did not propagate to the original part.